Hi everyone, welcome to the takeout with Kev the Rev and Pastor Angie. Come on, come on. So good to be here, so good to see you all joining us. This is week uh is 15. It 15. This is week 15. I was gonna say 16. This is week 15 of our study as we go through the New Testament, and it has been exciting. We are in our third book in the book of Luke. Um, and we're just so excited to see what God is doing, what God is saying. And so we're gonna reflect on that together yes. this week. Yeah. And today's special because it's it's a Monday. It's Easter Monday. Yes, I, I hope, hope you had a good weekend. Yes, I had a good weekend. Mm. I hope you had a good weekend. I had weekend. a great weekend, <laughs> as always. Come on, come on. Anyway, so um, um, uh, look, look. So this week we're gonna be moving from Luke 12, mm. uh, verse 35 there, um, and finishing the book of Luke 12. I mean, Luke 12, and then Luke 13, Luke 14. Uh, some of the stories are sort of already, already. mentioned mm. uh, in the other gospels, but again. Look for at them with a, just a different perspective, a new lens. Mm. Uh, ask God to speak to you uh, through those words uh, in a fresh way. But then Luke chapter 15 uh, is sort of different from the other chapters it in is that unique. way. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's the lost chapter. Mm-hmm. It's a lost chapter. <laughs> I have three lost stories. Yes. And I love it because these uh, parables are actually not in any other book. Yep. They are in the book of Luke. And so what I love is because remember Luke uh, said he gave an accurate uh, uh, representation. Account. Account, accurate account. He's mm. a doctor. And so he went around uh, gathering stories from eyewitnesses, from people who had been with Jesus. And so then he's the one to give us this unique perspective mm. of God's passion for the lost, God's, God's heart for his children. Yes. And so he gives three stories. Yes. And the three stories are in response yes. to some of the uh, Pharisees who are wondering, why is he eating with sinners? Mm. Why is he eating with tax collectors? Mm. Uh, uh, what value does he see in them? And so Jesus gives us stories that allows us to see va- the value that God has placed in people mm. and the reason why he would uh, seek out uh, uh, us in this way. So it starts with the lost sheep. Yep. I says, you know, uh, which uh, a shepherd, if he loses uh, one sheep, does he leave, not leave 99 mm-hmm. in the open country? Yeah. I'm like, what a shock. What a shock <laughs> to go look for the one. Yes. Finds it, puts it on his shoulders and then brings it back Call friends and says, guys, rejoice with me for I found my lost sheep. My lost sheep. What's your take out, take out on that one? So every time I read that parable, I remember a story when I think of um, Psalm 23. Yep. It's, it's, for, for me, that's where it comes to. It comes to when, when shepherds a long time ago wanted to, because um, sheep follow other sheep. Eh? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so when he wanted to control his sheep, he'd look for the one that mm. has the habit of straying. Mm-hmm. And what he would do is if you have a habit of straying and not obeying, he would come to you, get you. He'd actually leave the 99, get the one, and break his leg. <laughs> but this is what he'd do. He'd uh-huh. carry it on his shoulders. Mm. And so what he would do is, and it, in that psalm it says, he puts it on his shoulders mm. and rejoices with friends. Yeah. Because this one sheep also helps the 99. Oh. But it's easy for us in church to think, in the gospel to think, you know what, let those people out there do what they do. Yeah. You do you culture. Mm. Uh, and then we do what we're doing. But he says, no, the, the, the one also is for the sake of the 99. Wow. And so that one that he has broken, he would carry it. And so Psalm 23 says, he leads me to quiet waters because your leg is broken. Mm. He takes you, whether it's life that has broken you, whatever it is you're going through, he says, I'll carry you literally. And he puts him on his shoulder says when you need water i take you to the quiet waters to drink Mm. when it's time to eat he will settle sit next to him near the freshest grass under a shade so that you're not in the sun so what happens is this sheep that has gone through hard difficult time because of life or because you're a rebel (laughs) he would then in effect become so dependent on God mm. and so would follow him would you learn his voice because the shepherd most likely is singing wow. he's talking there's nobody else talks to you how are you my I friend know. Kevin she names you Ooh. you chill with him you feed him and he becomes everything to you Come and on. he says you are also the most important thing even for this the rest of the people in the church even wow. for the rest for the 99 mm. and so you beca- begin to depend on him you begin to 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 hear his voice to know his voice to know his you know it's time to get up mm. you know we're going to 
drink quiet cool water wow. you know most likely they even feed you the water because you can't go down and kneel what dependence and so i i lean back and i say i don't deserve your grace i don't deserve your mercy you could mm. have just left me because i'm you know out there but you're willing to come get me not just for my sake but also for the sake of the whole sheep and so it, it changes my perspective on how i see the church come on it changes my perspective on how i see the kingdom mm. to understand the church is wonderful but they're out there there's a, and there's that one sheep that needs to be here to make us whole wow. yeah i love that story and now you're you're saying it because the, this ship gets so used to the master mm. and then i when you say i i'd never seen that that this ship gets to uh, sort of allow the rest to follow the master but i'm also seeing when it's fully healed it's able to interpret exactly. the moves of the master yes. to the rest yes. when you see the master doing this this is what it means yes. and you're like how do you know i was with him when my yeah. when, when my when i was broken it was over here i understand the master's exactly. heart come on somebody because he carried literally carried you wow. he literally so these days when i go through situation i say i can go through anything as long as you are with me mm. because in that situation i know he's carrying me wow. in that situation i know he's leading me to the brook he's leading me to the water he's feeding me in fact me i have such expectation i'm like nibebe mm. like that song makes sense now because <laughs> <laughs> i'm like dude life has brought me to such a place wow. where only you can lift me up wow. uh, and it's a beautiful I, i love that story now i love it mm. then the next uh, well it's the same parable actually mm. actually when he says he told them this parable but the parable has three lost three parts, things within yeah. it so sometimes we, we do separate it but it's one story so he says the parable of the lost coin again uh, a, a woman has silver coins mm. 10 of them loses one mm. and the bible says she swept the entire house finds the coin calls people and they celebrate with, yeah. with her first of all me I'm always like this eh now you're going to use money to celebrate with people <laughs> so you just use that other money <laughs> Even this other story of the lost sheep I'm like you're going to start I'll go to celebrate with somebody people somebody <laughs> to celebrate this <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah, it. That's what's so your funny. vibe about this uh, story of the lost coin? I think for me it it represents the the value that he oh, has placed come on. on us. Come on. And and the value that God has placed on humankind and mankind mm. that he's willing to give up everything, do whatever it takes to get that one. Come on. And then when he gets that one, it's a celebration in heaven. It's a so he's going to call everybody mm. to get that one into the kingdom. And so sometimes we you know as uh, in human times, mm. I can bl- I can blame my tribe and say we would also have done the math and said yeah. it doesn't work. <laughs> But at the end of the day what he says is the value I s- I I put on mankind mm. the value i put on humankind is such that i will do everything to get that one i will do everything to, to get and then a celebration when that one comes into the kingdom mm. and, and i'm going to spend it's not going to be a losing it's going to be know. like for angie's sake for kev's oh, sake i'm going to call a bash and spend more because you're that valuable wow. so even when when it changes my perspective to say even when i work with colleagues in the office to understand there is a reason god placed that man mm. that woman to be your boss mm. because he has a value on them there's a reason he placed you to be a leader of that campus is a value he has placed on you there's a blessing he has put on you i don't think we value each other or the word that way yeah. to understand that lost person god has such a heart for them uh wow. he'll do anything and everything to get them wow you know a couple of weeks ago Uh, uh my wife and I had a robust conversation uh, you know because as pastors we don't fight yeah I mean, of course it's a robust conversation <laughs> <laughs> that's for mortals really? so anyway so <laughs> yeah this co- uh, robust conversation in heightened tones mm. and intonation and stuff <laughs> and so at some point we were you know we were, we, we were not uh, talking and so I was angry and so at some point I remember it sort of God asked me do you know she's my daughter mm. what eh hey. You can you afford her? Wow. Like do you know the value I've placed on wow. her so that you treat her in this way? I need to show Nick this. Nick I know, this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just went and said, you know, I humbled myself mm. <laughs> and realized she's God's daughter and yeah. maybe for someone over there your marriage is in the thick of it, but the truth is it's because you've forgotten the value yep. Yep. God has placed on that person. For you it's, it's rubbish and it's whatever, but hey to God they'll move heaven and everything else 
together. Come and just find them. Wow. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, and then the story dies into the lost son. Mm. I think we, we all... The prodigal son. Yeah, the prodigal we son. Love we it. know the story. Mm. We, uh, we've interacted with the story. Basically, this father has these two sons. Uh, the youngest comes over and says, hey, give me mm. the portion of my inheritance. And so the father does the calculations and is like, this is your inheritance. And the Bible says, not long after that, <laughs> the younger son... I only, I'm always intrigued by that. <laughs> not long. Not long after that. <laughs> And the guy used it all up. <laughs> yeah, the guy goes, he's lost in all this, you know, debauchery and stuff. Um, at some point, he comes back to his senses and is like, how many of my father's servants mm. have much more? And so he comes back, comes back to the father. The father receives mm. him, uh, gives him the best robe mm. and the best uh, uh, give, uh, sandals and a ring. And they are, they are bashing and they're celebrating. The older son who had remained at home mm. is like, hey, there's a bash at home. What's happening? Mm. And then he's told, oh, your son came back. Your and brother. so your father has sort of the fattened calf, uh, which you've been feeding. And okay, it doesn't say that. But <laughs> <laughs> and so the, the guy is like, he won't do it. Do you know what ha actually happens with this mm. son? The Bible says that the father went out. Mm. He actually went out and looked for him. And he says, hey, we had to celebrate. We had to do this. Your son, my son who was lost, is now is now oh. found. Tell me some things that you're catching from that story. For me, the thing I love is how how God restored his son. Mm. Um, it goes back to even to the talk before, yeah. <laughs> this all authority, because I I see him bringing him back. Number one, he waited. He was waiting. He was watching for yes, him. So watching. he had this huge business, obviously. Mm. He wasn't just concerned about the business. He was watching to see if his son was come back. Come on. So sometimes we act as if, uh, you know, I've left the church or God is not as concerned for me. He's actually watching wow. constantly for people to come back into his I kingdom. Love that. And then when he comes back, he receives his son and he's ready. He gives him the best robe. Mm. Like in my mind, you know, that's purple royalty. You've just immediately received start to your position having authority yeah. he gives oh, yeah. him the ring of authority yes. so he clothes him the in appropriate he gives him the signet ring then he puts on appropriate shoes for him that he, when he walks is not just a loose person out there do you know what i am seeing from that from from a distance the son looked just like the father, exactly. if not better, because if he had the better. best robe. Oh, exactly, come on, you're right. Come he on. gives him that. Mm. And then he says, uh, it says he had communion with him when mm. he slaughtered. He said, back into covenant, because ah. that's what communion is, that we're in covenant with God. Mm. And so he restores him fully by having having this ceremony and putting him back in covenant. Mm. And so the brother is upset. Why would you give him the authority back wow. while well, he has squandered. Mm. Why would you give him back position? Why would you have communion with him? And he says, don't you get, mm. this is it. Everything I've done, everything I'm doing is so that you and him would have full authority. Mm. Now, the shocking part is that the, the other brother was not walking in that full authority. He acted yes. like... like um, He was lost at home. Yeah, he was just at home chilling. Like, okay, mm. fine, I'm here. But he's like, but you have the authority. Mm. I've, you've always had it. And so it takes me back to that to say, number one, not only is God super passionate about everybody out there, but it's not that they would just come and sit on the outskirts. Mm. It's that they would be in church that they would have the, all the authority, wow. that they would have everything that God has desired for them because that's his plan for us. Wow. To position us. Come on. The other thing it, to me it tells me is, um, so two parts in God's kingdom, but also it shows me how to disciple, to, mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. It tells me that my role is to give people my robe. Oh. My role is to give them my ring. Mm. My role is to give them the ability with the shoes to go into spaces that I'm going into. Mm. And it just shows me that it's not just for me, it's for me to pass it on. And so I can be in church, but I, number one, I may not recognize the authority that I already have, mm. but I also don't know that I am, I represent just like my father, mm. that same thing. And so many times when I read it, I say, God, what, what, what authority, what do you want me to pass on mm. um, so that people may have that same thing? Because God values man, that he gives man the ability to pass on to another man mm. that same thing. Because there's a value. We don't, we don't get it. True. We don't understand. I don't get who Kev is. I just see him, but there's something in Have Kev. Have you been having a sense? You've been having you. a sense. <laughs> But that's it. And even to say, God, open my eyes that I see it. Like even in my nanny, there's mm, something she does. In the watchman, in, in, in that in, stewardess. Exactly. Wow. There's something in everyone, humankind. Mm. And there's a value that God has placed that he sent his only son. Come on. 
to die for that man, that woman, that child. There is something in mankind. Come on. And, it, and the devil knows it. Mm. <laughs> He's working hard to make sure we never see, we never understand the value of mankind. Mm. And God is so passionate. He gave everything for us, mm. everything for you. So just to say, God, help me see people as you see them. Because there's a, I think it's even past time who, who taught me that line. He says, help me see people as you see them. Because there's some, there's a value you've put in them. Mm. There's something we pass on to each other, to the kingdom, to the world. Because God can do anything, but he chooses to work with man. Who am I not to work with man? Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the entire chapter is about the value as you've placed it. Uh, may we, may God allow us to mm. see that value, but also to celebrate that value every mm. time. Yeah. Uh, it's not, just, you know, sometimes you can recognize, but then you're like, well, I ain't celebrating. Mm. But every time there's a celebration, That's there's right. a celebration. In fact, with the last one, it says we had to celebrate. That's right. Yeah. And so maybe this week, you know, celebrate the people yeah. around you. Celebrate them. Yeah, celebrate your discipleship group leaders. Celebrate your discipleship group mm. members. Celebrate your pastors. Pastors, celebrate your congregation. Mm. Uh, celebrate the people that you share. Celebrate your uh, spouse. A spa oh, one's a spouse. Mm. Uh, celebrate your children. Mm. Uh, send something to your mom and dad That's and right. just say, hey, I celebrate you. Yeah. I know we are together over Easter, but I celebrate That's you. That's right. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Beautiful. Come on. Yeah, so maybe you can just pray a prayer of celebrating one another. Amen. Say, Lord... Thank you for the value you've placed in each and every one of us. May we not just recognize it, may we celebrate it. All right. Mm. Father, thank you so much. We honor you. We worship you. We praise you with everything that is within us. Thank you that somehow in your plan of creating the earth, you choose to give authority to humankind. And despite Satan's plan, you still have chosen by your grace and mercy to come send your son so that man may be fully restored into the position you desired for him to be. And so I pray for every man and every woman hearing my voice, watching this podcast, listening, that Father, you would begin to place them back in the space that you have called them in. I pray that you open their eyes today to see the people that you have surrounded them with and that you will enable them to see the value that you have placed in each and every one of them. I pray for those of us who are leaders in the places that you have positioned us, in fact, all of us, that we will be able to call out greatness out of those you have uh, put around us, that we'll be able to bless those around us because you have called us and positioned us to be a blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you all. This has been the takeout with me, Kev the Rev and Pastor Angie. Thank you all. Let's let us know what you're thinking in the comments down below. We'd like to uh, uh, hear you. We'd like to uh, read out your comments in the next couple of uh, recordings. That's but for nice. now, thank you all. God bless you. God bless you.